Hi, welcome to another video in the Make the Cut Basics tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a set of nesting shapes, similar to the nesting dies that you can buy for a die cutting machine. Um, and you can use these as tags or as journaling spots on layouts or as mats for stamps, anything like that in your paper crafting projects. So I'm going to start just by putting a couple basic shapes on the mat. So I'm going to click on the basic shapes icon and I'm going to pull in a rectangle right here. And then I'm going to come to generic and I'm going to pull in a circle just by double clicking. And you can see that they've both shown up on my mat there. So I'm going to click on the X now to get rid of that. Now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on the mat so you can see what I'm doing a little bit easier. Now I'm going to take this circle and I'm going to stretch it out a little bit and we'll turn it into an oval and then this rectangle I'm going to bring down and I'm going to pull it across the circle. So I'm just going to adjust the shape a little bit. So what I want is a shape that has the oval and then the corners of the rectangle kind of poking out from the sides. I'm going to make that just a little bit smaller there. So it might take a little bit of playing just to get things the way that you want them. That looks pretty good so what I'm going to do is select both of those just by clicking and dragging all the way around and then I want to line them up perfectly on top of each other so I'm going to right click go to align and space then select align and then stack and what that will do is perfectly align them horizontally and vertically. So now you can see everything is nicely lined up and what I'm going to do is come down and click on the weld icon at the bottom and that just joins those two shapes into one. So now you can see I've got a really nice uh, tag shape there. Now one thing that you might be tempted to try is just duplicate this and then make the second one a little bit bigger and that would give you your mat or your next size of nesting shape. So I'm going to show you what happens if you try to do that. So I'm just going to right click on this and hit copy and then right click and paste in place. So that gives me a duplicate exactly on top. Now I'm going to come over here to the layers palette and I want those two pieces each on their own layer. So I'm going to right click and select to each its own and now you can see that I've got the two shapes on two different layers. So I'm just going to come in and select the top shape and now what I'm going to do is just grab the corner here. You can see it's got the um, double-ended arrow so I'm just going to drag that out a little bit just to make it a bit bigger. Okay. And now I'm going to select the two shapes again and I'm going to stack them again so that they're perfectly lined up horizontally and vertically. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here. But now you can see what's starting to happen is just by making one shape larger than the other, because the shape is not a perfect circle or a square because it's this oblong shape, when I just enlarge one of them, you can see that it's slightly longer than it is wider. So if I use this as a mat, my mat would be wider on the ends than the top and bottom and that's not what I want. I want the mat to be perfectly the same size all the way around. So I'm going to select that enlarged one and delete it. Now this time what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to come up to shape magic and I'm going to select shadow layer and then this dialog window pops up. Now the first thing that I want to do is change my corner join. Right now rounded is is what's automatically selected. What I want is mitered. And what that will do is just make sure that my square corners stay nice and square. And now I'm going to start bringing up the shadow width. So I'm going to bring it up to 0 0.0575. And that gives me a nice little mat all the way around. So I'll click on accept. So now you can see what has happened is it's actually created a second shape, but this time the mat is perfectly sized so that it's the same size all the way around. So now I've got the two shapes. Now what I can do to continue creating those nesting shapes if I want to create a whole set that I can save is just select the outside shape, the larger one, 
right click shape magic shadow layer so go through the same steps again again make sure that the corners are mitered and then drag up the shadow width and I'm going to select the same shadow width 0 0.0575 and before I click on OK I'm actually just going to show you what will happen if I choose the other corner join options so for example if I choose beveled now it drops my shadow width back down again so I'm going to drag it out but you can see that the beveled corners give me that kind of chopped off corner and if I select rounded it gives me a rounded corner so what I want is mitered so that it stays nice and square so I'm going to whoops I'm just going to adjust that back down to 0 0.0575 so it's consistent click on accept so now I've got three perfectly shaped perfectly sized shapes so I'm just going to continue that I'm going to select the outside one again shape magic shadow layer and you can just continue doing this until you've created as many sizes of that shape as you want and then you can just save those and you now have a set of nested shapes that you can cut out in any combination for your paper crafting project.